WrestleMania officially heading back to Vegas for the first time since 93. We got the city right, but not the date. They actually will be running WrestleMania on Easter Sunday. Saturday, April 19th, and Saturday, April 20, 2025. Easter. Hmm. Not sure I can go now. Surprised by that. By Easter? Yeah, by them running on Easter. Well, the reason they're running on Easter, and they always avoided Easter, because, you know, it's Easter and all, but apparently Vegas requested Easter weekend because, you know, a lot of people don't travel to Vegas on Easter weekend. So they figured, okay, well, we'll give them something to come to Vegas for on Easter weekend. And that will be two nights of WrestleMania, Allegiant Stadium, home of the Raiders. SummerSlam 2021 was the first WWE event to be held there. They announced that, uh, hey, if you want to go to Vegas, better go to Vegas because they will be doing Raw, SmackDown, the 2025 Hall of Fame Ceremony, NXT Stand and Deliver, and the WWE World Convention. So, of course, the last time they ran was that uh, that WrestleMania in Vegas where Jim Ross debuted in a toga and uh, Hulk Hogan showed up and beat Yokozuna for the title. The WrestleMania 9. And then disappeared. And then came back to do one job and then was never seen again. Yeah, but you did have that awesome Head Shrinker Steiners match, so there was that. Brother, I am not going to Vegas to see one good match. But you I would you had to. strongly suspect that this WrestleMania is going to be significantly better. They got two days to figure it out. And I got a year to figure it out because, you know, mm-hmm. I always go to WrestleMania... Except yeah. for this year, I enjoy uh, I enjoy going to WrestleMania, despite what some people on Twitter think. I've been to like a dozen, actually more than that. How many WrestleManias did I go to? Uh, 14 or something like that, maybe more. Oh. But I didn't go this year. And as a result of not going, man, we had a heck of a Mania weekend here on the site. And we did like three shows a day for like four straight days. And uh, it was actually pretty uh, pretty fun. So I got to figure out like... Is it, is it more worthwhile to go to Vegas to watch these shows or, like, do three shows a day for four straight days? I guess we'll have to figure it out. You don't want to, you know, overextend yourself when it comes to Vegas. I've too, never overextended myself ever. It, really? Not, you, you don't want to push it, though. I'm constantly you start, underextended. You start, <laughs> you, start making, you start making two Vegas trips a year because of the convention going on in AEW and WrestleMania? I mean, can you handle all this, old man? It's not an issue of that. It's an mm-hmm. issue of my responsibilities to my constituency here uh, at F4WOnline.com. They were going to run Minnesota, but it did not happen due to, quote, a change in direction by new ownership. Which essentially means new ownership didn't want to go to Minnesota in the in the cold, uh, you know, so they're going to go to the warm place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, no surprise there. But you know, we've been talking. They said <laughs> we've been discussing. Well, well, they'll they'll be here at some point. Yeah, they're they're yeah. giving them something. Once the Earth is warmed enough that it's like warm in Minnesota, you'll you'll see a WrestleMania there. Maybe 2025's SummerSlam would be perfect for Minneapolis. Yes. Brian says Vegas is in the desert. It's not cold. Sometimes it is. Yeah. We'll talk to Tom about it. Sometimes it is cold there in the desert. But uh, I don't think it's going to be in in, uh, mid-April. But we shall see. But not the first week of May. Not the first week of May. So I guess we'll have to figure that out. Well, anyway, that's WrestleMania, everybody. We've been waiting. Now we have the answer. We also have this. Ric Flair... Believes he suffered a heart attack during his final match. He was on the Jackson podcast last month. He said, I went to get what's called a calcium scan, which I'd never had before, because a couple of guys died in our business of heart issues, so it kind of scared me. A couple of guys? They give you the nuclear stress test, shoot you with the dye, put you on the treadmill, everything. Two days of three hours of tests six months ago. Guy takes me in. And if you look at your heart like a round pie, there's a piece of my heart right here, this 
big, it's black, and it's gone. The guy said, you had a heart attack. You had a heart attack in the last two years. He said, have you passed out in the last two years? And during my last match, I passed out three times. I thought it was because I was dehydrated. So I went in the locker room with Kid Rock and Taker, just drank two bottles of Gatorade, went back out to Kid Rock's place all night long, but I had a heart attack. A couple of weeks after the match, Flair mentioned on his podcast he had passed out twice during the match. Again noted he believed it was due to dehydration. Mentioned The Undertaker insisted he drink Gatorade rather than beer when he got back to the locker room. Now that's a locker room leader, that Undertaker. <laughs> he knew. He knew. You know, when you do a match and you pass out twice, mm, three times. it's best to go back and have some Gatorade and not beer. Oh, yeah. Thank yeah. you, Undertaker. Yeah, really. Swear to God, he says, twice during the match, I went completely black. Hands started to tremble. <laughs> yep, but it was all dehydration. I had two doctors in there right away with me and everything. Undertaker came running in and said I had six beers there. He took them out of my hand and said, you're drinking two Gatorades first. I said, Gatorade? What? So I drank two, and that was that was all it was. If you guys don't remember what happened here... Let them know. Well, Flair was going to have his last match. And I think part of the story that people might forget is that he actually did train really hard. Oh, will you stop? Well, hold on. He trained very hard. For a 70-something-year-old man with heart issues. Hold on a minute. Let me continue. Yes, go ahead. He trained very, very hard. We had uh, videos that came out prior to the match of him training. And he looked all right, you know. Jay, Jay Lethal. I'm not saying that I would have allowed him to do the match. I'm just saying, like, if you watched the videos that came out before the match... It did not look like he would have a problem getting through a tag team match, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, what happened was, well, it was the weekend of the match. It was like the day of the match. And he did all of this preparation and everything. And then when the day came, apparently he decided, God darn, I'm Ric Flair. And so uh, it was all out the window. He was drinking, drinking, drinking. Up all night, drinking, drinking. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys wrestled or not. Uh, that's not a good thing to do when you're, like, 30. And he was in his 70s. So, like, I mean, he not only fell off the wagon, but, like, you know, he pushed the wagon off the cliff, dropped the boulder off the cliff onto the wagon. I mean, he just, like, went hog wild. And then he got in there and, I mean... It he was sad. a calamity, is what it was. Sad doesn't even begin to describe how this match was. Pathetic. And uh, he did, I mean, I don't, sometimes wrestlers tell stories and they're like full of it. I don't doubt for one second he had a heart attack in this match. Not for no. one second. No, Watching the match. It. Forget what we heard afterwards. Watching the match. He just like collapsed. It was like dead. during. I'm not even joking. During the match. I was like, is that guy ever going to get up? I mean, it was a disaster. Slumped over the ropes. Ugh. Yeah, this is horrible. So anyway, uh, you know, it was a, it was he very well. We could have all just watched him die in the middle of the ring of that match, and somehow he didn't. I mean, because he's Ric Flair, and I mean, you know, you know the things this guy's been through that no. he survived. I mean, that's one of the reasons he did all that is because he's always survived, and so well, that's a story with Ric Flair. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute, as noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, 
Full access to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.